I'm going to officially welcome you to uh, another meeting, Zoom meeting. Today is Monday, June 22nd. Uh, this is Engineering 200 at Mesa College. Hope everybody is doing great. And this is the second week of summer school. And uh, I've already posted uh, homework for chapter three. And you already had the chance to work on homework part one for chapter two. And I think you still have chance to work on homework uh, part two, chapter two, part two, I believe so, okay? So I gave the de a deadline to submit the homework for chapter three on, um, let's see, um, uh, will be the next Sunday, okay? Before, because we're gonna have an exam on Monday, next Monday on chapter two and three. It's on the syllabus, right? On the syllabus. Yes? Thursday, no? Is it this coming Thursday? I thought so. Oh, uh, let me see. Oh, thank you for sharing that with me. Then in that case, I need to go to... Monday um, Monday, so. <laughs> okay, thank you for sharing because I have too many things going on. And I'm going to go to syllabus, guys, hang in there. It takes me like less than a minute to uh, find out. Okay, summer 2020 engineering um uh, engineering 200 summer 2020 syllabus and i'm gonna go to the calendar let's see what calendar is saying oh okay it's gonna be this coming thursday okay this coming thursday that's good okay thank you all right so we're gonna have exam on this coming thursday because i can finish the um the lecture tomorrow for um you know, for ch chapter three, because I'm gonna do most of them today. And then you have the re uh, tomorrow, another, you know, session. And then Wednesday, we're gonna review. And then Thursday, you're gonna have exam one, okay? All right, so. Now, I, I just wanted to give you a quiz tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow, I, just two problems I've already posted on mastering engineering, and also the submission of your work to uh, Canvas. I'm going to explain that to, uh, to you guys, okay? I'm recording this. Just put your seatbelt on. I'm going to clarify everything, okay? I've done this at last, the last semester, and it worked really well. And uh, there is a part of the grade that will be on mastering engineering. So I assigned 10 points for each question. And there are two questions, 60 minutes time. So it's you, ha you have the problem stated, like the homework, like homework, and then you enter the correct answer, okay? The difference between homework and exam is that it doesn't let you try it six times, okay? No, just the one time, okay? This is what I want you to do. On a sheet of paper, when you are, uh, when you open that exam that will be open on uh, 7.59 a.m., and it's gonna close at 7.59 p.m. So there's a window of from 8 a.m. to like 8 p.m. That's a window that the, the, the exam will be ready or the quiz will be ready. Uh, when you open it, you have only 60 minutes to finish it, okay? Then it's gonna kick you out, all right? 60 minutes for two problems. And I'm thinking that I already looked at it. I said, well, this is going to, the, the, uh, the system is saying it shouldn't take more than eight minutes to do this test, but I gave you 30 minutes for each test, okay? The system is saying eight minutes. So 60 minutes. Uh, you're, uh, that is, you're in, you got to do the work because this is not a political science class. This is not a history class. This is not a multiple choice questions and things like that. Similar to your homework, and I saw somebody's you know, work and post it for me, and I looked at it, it was really elaborate, nicely done, step by step, applying the principle uh, uh, and the governing equations, all the good stuff, plus free body diagrams, okay? Free body diagram. In, uh, Neat as the, you you got to show your work as clear as neat as possible as clear as neat as possible not like a scratch work okay because you're gonna get uh, five additional points 
for each problem when you submit your work to Canvas, because I've already created a folder on Canvas for you to submit your work. How do you submit? When you are done with your work, similar to math and the thermodynamics, and the students, you know, you took picture of your, of your work, and then you convert it to PDF, a PDF file, make sure it's combined, not one page. You might have three pages, four pages of your work, but you combine on a PDF file, and then you upload it to Canvas. My advice to you is, as soon as you're done with the, t uh, with the quiz, uh, you have an hour to take pictures and uh, send it, you know, because I have the time that tells me when you upload it, right? It happened last semester. Just tell the students, oh, I just um, uh, took the quiz or exam on mastering engineering. Then I walked away. I forgot to submit my work. You see what I'm saying? I forgot to submit. So you don't get the credit uh, for 10 points. You're going to lose 10 points. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Um, so, uh, Alex, you yeah. want to talk to them? Uh, I have a question. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, so my question was, would you still give us the five points even if the work was to be incorrect, at least showing that we tried? Yes, this is what I'm going to do, okay? Uh, um, uh, let's see. Uh, if, say, if your answer on mastering engineering was incorrect, you didn't get, you got maybe five points out of 10 points because I assigned 10 points for each problem on mastering engineering. And it happened that last semester, I had the students that got everything wrong, but they submitted the work because the mastering engineering gave, gave that person zero. And then you submitted your work uh, to Canvas and I look at your, everybody's work line by line. If I see that everything is good, but you made an arithmetic error or some error that it's just uh, Canvas uh, did not like your answer. It says that's the wrong answer, okay? So that will give you law of partial credit. Are you with me? Partial credit for submitting your work. Say you got perfect score on mastering engineering and you submit your work step by step and then you earn additional five points. So that means on Canvas, it says the total possible points for this quiz is 30 points. It's gonna show on a grading column, it says 30 points because 20 points comes from mastering engineering and 10 points for submitting your work for quiz. I'm trying to experiment this for the quiz number one to see whether you are comfortable, I mean, not comfortable, to be able to um, uh, organize your work and submit your work to Canvas so I can download it and see everybody's work. Last semester, I thought that some students Okay, some students, not all of them. This is engineering class. Can, are you listening to me? Everybody, listen carefully. This is not just a, another class that you need to take and, and forget about it, okay? This is going to ruin your life down the road as you go to upper level courses. Do not, I put the rubrics and rules for cheating on Canvas. I posted already, you can read it. Read before you take the quiz. There are a number of students and had this um, audacity or this kind of mentality. Oh, I didn't read the rules for the quiz. And I said, that's your problem. You should read. I said, read before you take the quiz. That is not a good attitude as an engineer. Engineers should have a better attitude. You are going to take the quiz yourself, not check.com not your friends, not someone online, not the solution manual. You're going to assess your own work. It's better to, to do things that you don't know. You say, I don't know. And instead of copying from somewhere that is illegal. Okay, I call it illegal. Is that cool, my friend? I have been teaching this class for at least 28 years. And I have seen all kinds of tricks. And I've learned all the tricks that the students pull, and I'm not going to tolerate that, okay? Because you gotta take the, the quiz and exams as we go through summer. 
you need to value every minute of it that you're doing the work yourself, you're submitting your work with ethics, with high level of ethical values that you are going to maintain and throughout your uh, education and do not really let someone else do the work for you that is called plagiarism and cheating and then one of the professor last semester sanctions about 18 students for cheating for copying okay all right so i uh, i can see who is copying who is not copying okay okay i i watch like robert De Niro said i'm watching you okay i'm watching you know he said you're talking to me i said yes i'm talking to you and i'm watching you okay all right so please do your own work and um, maximize your knowledge or your efficiency of becoming engineers, okay? The statics is the most valuable course. All the physics courses, math courses, everything you have taken was to prepare you for engineering classes. This is the first engineering class that put you in a very good position if you get it right, if you learn how to do it. Everything else will work out down the road if you are strong in statics. Then you can go to dynamics, you can take properties of materials, you can take circuits, you can take um, you know, uh, programming, MATLAB, fine. But the static is, that's why I'm teaching the statics. I didn't want any part-time faculty to teach a static because I want to let you know that this is a serious business, serious approach to education okay and then i'll let you go and take classes with other professors and, and uh, in, uh, in san diego state usd ucsd purdue university berkeley stanford anywhere you go if you are good in statics you're in a driver's seat if not you're, in, you're gonna drive your feet okay that's my advice for the um, quizzes and exam that you're gonna have before we finish this summer school, okay? I don't want to repeat that again, and it's already posted everything. And uh, any questions? Okay. Um, I was wondering, will the quiz start tomorrow whenever our lecture typically starts? Okay, the quiz, it, it will be open. It's If you go to Mastering Engineering, it will tell you the quiz is gonna be open at 7.59 a.m. and it's gonna close at 7.59 p.m. So for people that are working or they have scheduled problem, you have that kind of window to uh, make a decision to sit down in a quiet place and take the quiz, two problems. I'm testing you with two problems. Um, so you show your work as neat as possible, do the work, then you cannot just look at the question and answer on the, on the mastering engineering, it's impossible. There's no way that you can come up with an answer. In million trial and errors, you will not be able to do that, but there's no trial and error, there is one chance. Because if your work is correct, you did the work right, and you end up with an answer, then you enter that answer that you got on a sheet of paper. After you submitted the, you know, the work to Mastering Engineering, the two problems, then take pictures of your work, and they convert it from JPEG. Okay, please do not. They're other students. No matter how many times I told this person not to send me the JPEG, it just did not, it did not get into their, their brain. Or something. I said, what am I, I'm, I'm telling you just, you're gonna be an engineer. If you don't pay attention, you don't listen, you're gonna be fired. You know, they fire you because you don't pay attention to rules. Rules must be maintained and we have to just be serious about it. Not that we're not playing, games or anything, we're saying, please convert, you know, practice. You are a you uh, generation that you know how to use your phone and take it, but do not take picture of the exam and send it to some dudes somewhere out there outside the world. And then, then they uh, do the work for you because it happened, number of students, I did that. I found out it's just a bad timing, you know? I. Honestly, I wanted to submit those people that, you know, did the change to Dean's office, to the student's office, to make sure that they can be sanctioned for that, okay? So, 
please don't do that, okay? I'm giving you my advice and take it, okay, my friend, take it from someone with experience and someone that I've been doing this for all my life. I just didn't get here today, okay? I just did not arrive here today. So uh, um, what I want you to do is uh, take pictures of your work with your phone, and then you submit that to, or convert that to PDF, to PDF, and then uh, upload it to uh, go to Canvas. It tells you to upload your file. It says submission, okay? Submission, file submission. So let's see how it goes, okay? Tomorrow, I will, by tomorrow, uh, I will let you know whether you did it right or not, okay? All right, so. Uh, Alex, do you want to share anything? Do you want to uh, maybe uh, clarify more? Uh, yeah, so uh, I sent an announcement a little bit earlier, but uh, I got the dates mixed up, so I want to clarify. I went back, I edited the announcement and put the correct dates, but I want to reiterate that since your test is on Thursday, that one, there will not be a mentor session for Thursday. And two, that Wednesday specifically will be a test preparation session. I have a physical copy of an exam from a previous semester. So we will go over that and I'll also highlight the formulas that you'll need for this exam. And uh, regarding the part where you turn in your work for the exam, um, just a little uh, warning, make sure that before you turn in the PDF of the work that you check the files because I've had some students where they, they find a, an app for their phone where it, it instantly converts the pictures they take to a PDF, but uh, they just turn it in and then sometimes the PDF just didn't be a PDF, it's just JPEGs or sometimes they turn it in and the PDF uh, it, file is there, but when you open it, there's nothing on it. So make sure to check your files before you turn in, turn them in. Thank you. Thank you, you listen. Thank you, uh, uh, Alex. Because it happened to some student that they submitted their work, they think that the somebody was empty or it was just something happened that it, you know, the system didn't accept or you please uh, check, confirm, your, make sure that you are, 100% sure that your work has been submitted, okay? And don't just go somewhere and come back because I want you to submit, you know, you have an hour to just do the, you know, preparation. It shouldn't take more than five, 10 minutes to submit your work. If you have a sheet of paper with your work, take pictures. And then on your, there is an app, as you, um, Alex mentioned, you can convert uh, your JPEG to um, PDF and then send that PDF to Canvas. And I can see the file, PDF file, but some students, their file was not PDF. I was click on it, there was nothing there. Okay, so this will be, that's why I said this will be a, a very good test for everyone that I will let you know that, hey, your work was not submitted correctly and I couldn't open it and you lose 10 points. Okay, all right, so no whining, no complaining, I'm trying to, it tell you that you need to be careful. You have to pay attention so you don't get into accidents. Okay, all right. So thank you, Alex, for sharing that and also the conversion to uh, your phone app. If you don't have the phone with app that, you know, it's not an advanced phone, you can always tech email it to yourself, right? You can email it mm -hmm. to yourself and then you can just um, there is a free, I think there is a, you can just convert to PDF on, from by Google and then you just save on your desktop the, the PDF file and combine, okay, combine, not one, uh, one page at a time. It has to be, if you have even five pages, it's going to go page one, page two, page three, page four. Make sure you label, say problem number one, whatever, okay, uh, question number one. Question number two or question number one, page one, continue to the next page. It's still this question number one, continue it, okay? Continue and make it as as legible, as clean, as clear as possible, okay? Is that if you cool? have an iPhone and you use your notes, uh, you can actually scan straight into a PDF format. 
If you have an iPhone, I don't know about Android though. Okay, that is, thank you for sharing that. You guys are very knowledgeable. Please, if uh, you, you know, share if you have any shortcut, not, you know, things that is gonna help your classmate, please share that with them, okay? Um, because I was, I was teaching thermodynamics uh, for uh, just three weeks at USD. So I had to, students asked me to, uh, to come up with a solution to the problems, the exam problem. And then I did it and then I took pictures and then I converted to PDF and then I posted on Blackboard for them because they don't have, USD does not have, Canvas is a Blackboard, doesn't matter, that's the same thing. So I learned how to do that, that I, I got used to that. And, uh, uh, you know, I said, oh, this is comfortable because I want to make sure that is a PDF file. Okay, obviously. All right, thank you. I think we, we did that and then uh, let's, uh, have this quiz first and get used to the, uh, taking the quiz on mastering engineering and uh, submitting your work to Canvas. So for exam, then you don't have that kind of, you know, questions because it's already then it's comfortable and it's clear what to do for the exam. Okay, all right, is that cool? All right. Professor, I have yes. a question. So in the past, uh, when I've done this, I've uploaded the picture and uh, attached it to a document and then converted the document to a PDF. Is that okay? Documents and then PDF. As long as when you submit it to Canvas, I see a PDF file. Yep. I don't, yeah, no problem. If okay. it's a PDF, because I see that 45 students enrolled in this class. I have to go one by one and click and open, you know, open it. Because if there is a file that I'm not able to open it, then I'm going to ignore it. I go to the next, I ignore it. So you lose points. So I want to make sure that is, it's time consuming. The reason I'm saying that uh, it's going to take so much time to open one uh, uh, file at a time and then uh, uh, going through line by line to make sure that you're following the steps correctly to complete that, assign that uh, problem for the quiz and exams and so on. Then I will save it, you know, I don't delete them, it's there. So I go to the next person, next student, next student, and I have a sheet of paper, I'm gonna record the, 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 whether it's, you know, complete, and then I give you the 10 points, uh, which is, um, you know, bonus points by uploading your work to, um, uh, but I wanna make sure that your work is clear, because some students' work is so, or off and they got the answer in mastering engineering correct, but the answer on your work does not match the answer that you entered in mastering engineering. That shows something is wrong. As somebody, uh, let, let me tell you that the answer for each student is different, okay? Each student, they got different answer. So, because the numbers are not the same. And this way, um, I can tell that why you got zero on mastering engineering and or, or you got perfect score in mastering engineering and you didn't do well on the work. Your work does not support your uh, answer that you got correct on mastering engineering. How did you get that? We have to figure that out, okay? All right, so, uh, okay, let's just do the first quiz and then I will tell you what was the problem, what kind of, you know, I can give you some feedback on that, okay? Give you feedback. Okay, right, thank so. you. You're welcome. And um, thank you, Christian. Let's just start with the, um, uh, I'm gonna share uh, this uh, uh, chapter three, um, uh, first slide or first lecture or chapter three, okay? All right, in a nutshell, when we move from vector calculus chapter two, we are in a, in a world of equilibrium, okay? Equilibrium of particle, the free body diagrams and coplanar forces for systems. So no longer we're dealing with uh, vector calculus, but information that you acquired or knowledge you acquired in ch chapter two is gonna come and help you in this chapter. But chapter uh, three talks about summation forces in X direction set to zero, summation forces in Y direction is set to zero because we're talking about equilibrium no movement, no motion. 
So all the forces, the Newton's law said that force equals mass times acceleration. Since there is no acceleration, therefore force is zero in all axes. If it's a three-dimensional force system, along the X, along the Y, along the Z, all those three axes, the force is set to zero, and then you end up with number of equations and number of unknowns, you solve them simultaneously. Prerequisite for this chapter, prerequisite. Everyone should have a clear understanding of solving systems of equations. Two equations with two unknown, three equations with three unknown. You have learned that in algebra class and other classes. You can, you have all the freedom to use as long as you show your work, okay? You show your equation. You don't have to show me how to solve systems of equation like an algebra class by elimination methods, by um, substitution method, using matrices, you know, like uh, uh, Kramer's rule and so on. You can use your calculators, if you know how to use your graphing calculators, which you should, and it's going to give you the answer, okay? Again, make sure you test them, so this way uh, you know that you got the correct answers for systems of equations, solving systems of equations. All right, that is one thing. The second thing is that please do not get confused between summation of forces and x direction equals FRx in chapter two, and summation forces in y direction equals FRY, and then you have to find it uh, after you converted the forces, you know, to Cartesian vector form, then you found the magnitude, sorry about that, then you found the magnitude of the resultant force. Here, we're talking about summation forces in x direction set to zero, summation forces in y direction set to zero. So let's do this. Units is also important, okay? So we have, um, uh, Tension and cables, tension, okay? Every time we have cord or cables, we assume the weight of the cables or cord negligible, okay? And significant compared to the forces that is um, you need to uh, pull or, or lift a heavy duty weight and the, the weight of the cord is insignificant, so we just. And if you are uh, analyzing the tension on the cable, tension for the given cable, assume that the tension is constant based on certain conditions. If you have a pulleys and pulleys and cable, assume that the pulley's weight is insignificant, frictionless pulleys, and then um, you have to show the, on a free body diagrams your work, okay? So here it says for a spool of a given weight, how would you find the forces and cable? We say, force along the cable AB, force along cable AC. If designing a spreader bar like this one, you need to know the forces to make sure that the rigging does not fail. Okay, so um, this is, I mean, that's another one. We're gonna go to some, okay. This is a good, uh, maybe example here. Here's an example of a 2D coplanar force system. If the whole assembly is in equilibrium, then the particle A is also in equilibrium. We have a ring in here. We have a cable that is uh, pulling it in that direction, connected to the support B or pin B and pin D from AB. So, and then we have a 40 kilogram of cylinder. This cylinder is as a mass of 40 kilogram. When you sketch the free body diagram of this, you show that's your origin here, A. Okay, let me just say, to determine the tension and the cables of a given weight, of cylinder, you need to learn how to draw a free body diagram, okay? Very important. This is how you draw the free body diagrams here. Let me go, I'm gonna come back to that, okay? All right, so this is the free body diagram. This is the weight, so we convert the mass to weight. That means W equals mg, mass times gravitational acceleration. Mass is 40 kilogram, and then G is 9.81. In physics class, they said G is 9.80, but in engineering, we call it 9.81 meter per second squared. So therefore, Newton is what? One kilogram meter per second squared is a Newton, okay, one Newton. So we have, we have to show by the vector here that this is a tension on the cable, AD, okay, free body diagram at the origin is at A, X and Y axis, 
And this is a tension on cable AB, which has an angle of 30 degrees. So um, um, when you um, go to apply the equation of equilibriums, we know that summation of all the forces is set to zero according to Newton's law. There is no acceleration here, and therefore summation of all the forces is set to zero. Fc was, this number came from the 40 kilogram times 9.81. You came up with this number, okay? All right, so now you're showing the free body diagram as neat as possible. Then you say summation of forces in x direction is set to zero. You don't need for 2D, you don't need to use Cartesian vector form. You can just use a scalar, okay? Say summation of forces in x direction set to zero, and then you're gonna write uh, like this, okay? A scalar form. For two-dimensional, my friend, please do not use the Cartesian, okay? Do not use Cartesian approach for 2D. For 3D, yes. For three-dimensional force system, very important. You use the Cartesian vector form, IJK. But for 2D, a scalar is quicker, easier, okay? Equation of equilibrium. So we say summation of forces in X direction. This direction is positive. You are indicating that this direction is positive, set to zero. So we have the... If you um, project this FB onto x-axis, will be FB cosine of 30 degrees minus FD, which is along the negative x-axis. And then summation of forces in y direction set to zero. Then we have a FB sine of 30 degrees minus 392.4 Newton. So this is two unknown here. There's a one unknown here. You solve for FB, you substitute into this equation and you solve for FD. This is a very easy problem, okay? Simple problem. So solving the second equation, FB came out to be 785 Newton. And then, um, so that's a FB, all right? So 385 Newton. And then from this first equation, we get FD, okay? Which is this one here as indicated in that direction is 680 Newton, which is correct. All right, so that's the answer in Newton. Next. Uh, we go from this basic of equilibrium to a spring, okay, my friend? Just pay attention, put your seatbelt on, okay? Uh, mechanical engineers, aerospace engineers, maybe civil engineers, and other engineers, you will be dealing with the spring. The spring has a constant, or a stiffness of the spring is denoted by K, okay, K. And it has a, a, a unit of Newton per meters, okay? Newton per meters. And if we have a spring at equilibrium, we call it the length um, uh, with the um, uh, length, uh, how should I say that here? That's the original length. And this is the final length, okay? So original length before you apply the load and then you apply the load is gonna stretch. So the difference between the final length and original length, we call it the amount of a stretch, okay? The amount of a stretch, S. So according to this spring uh, uh, force or Hooke's law, or we call it Hooke's law, the spring constant K, the formation of the spring or stretch is S. In some textbooks, you see K times X or K times delta X or what have you, okay, all right, so. We can always determine the spring constant by using uh, some, uh, you know, uh, just pick a, a spring they give you, and then you just mount it or hook to the table, and then you stretch, you know, you use the rulers, and you know what the original length is, then you apply the known load, and you have the, you create a chart, or x-axis and y-axis, put the x-axis, x, y-axis as a load, you put a known load on that, and then you just find out how much deformation you get, so you continue, and then you're gonna end up with a linear line, and the slope of that linear line, we call it the stiffness of the spring, okay? All right, so if we have cables and pulleys, you see that we have tension one, tension two, cables is in tension here, and, uh, and since the tension is constant, T1 equals T2, with a frictionless pulley and cable, okay, friends? Assumption is this, that when we deal with a cable, assume that the cable is inextensible. Inextensible means doesn't stretch. Assumption that the cables or cord that we are using for our purpose here is doesn't stretch. Okay? And the weight is insignificant and also we have frictionless pulley. All right. 
And there we go. We have another problem here. We have two cables. It's holding this crate or uh, box here, which is 55 pounds. Now we go from metric units to uh, US systems of units or FPS units. So you don't have to convert here, okay? That's the weight. Do not multiply by 32.2, okay? Because that's not acceptable, because this is the weight. So it says the box weighs um, 550 pounds and geometry is shown, the forces and the ropes, A, B, and A, C, we want to determine. So draw a free body diagram for point A and apply the equation of equilibrium to solve for the forces and ropes A, B, and A, C, yes. And this is the nice free body diagram. We have a slope of this uh, cord or cables, and here, A, C, we have three, four, five triangles, and this is a 30 degrees. So E of E means equation of equilibrium. This is the equation of equilibrium. Summation of forces in X direction set to zero. That's a minus FB cosine of 30 degrees plus FC times four fifth. This, okay, four parallel to the x-axis, four fifth. Um, summation of forces in Y direction equals FB sine of 30 plus F, FB sine of 30 is upward. Oh, this is wrong, okay? This arrow here, that's a typo. That's a typo, should be upward direction, okay? Y is the upward direction. This is wrong here. So FB sine of uh, 30 degree and FB um, times three over five, which is correct, minus 550, because downward is negative, upward is positive. So solving above equations, we've got two equations with two unknown, we solve them simultaneously, we end up with a force uh, for cable AB is 478, and uh, for cable AC came out to be 580 pounds. Probably if there was a limit for design, this cable will snap first than this one. Okay, all right, so anyway, and then we go to another problem. Maybe this will be a little bit more challenging. Uh, we have one cable, tension DE, tension DC, tension CA, and tension CB. The mass for this lamp is 20 kilograms, and geometry is shown. The force, we want to determine the force in each cable, okay? So the best, always, the good thing is that when we sketch the free body diagram. In this case, we have to create two separate free body diagrams. One, first time, we're gonna start with a join D or ring D, and then we go to ring C, okay? We start with a ring D, and then we're gonna have a tension uh, uh, on cable FDE and FDC, and then downward is the weight for this lamp, which is MG. Okay, I'm gonna just skip that. I'm gonna go to the point that we need to look at, okay, here. D is, uh, is uh, indicated, and then we have FCD, and then we have, again, cable, Cord, we don't use compression, okay? Tension, always pull, pull, okay? Not compression, tension. So FDE angle, you indicate nicely. Don't, don't be sloppy, but just, you know, like a scratch work, you know, just a, not really paying attention. It doesn't look nice. Show your work, have a ruler, show your work as neat as possible, okay? And then the weight is 20 times 9.81. That's a gravitational acceleration, meter per second, square. FCD here, we apply summation of forces in uh, X direction and Y direction set it to zero. Doesn't matter whether you start with a Y or X. See that? Summation of force in Y, upward is correct. That's a direction, correct direction, positive. FDE, FDE times sine of this angle, minus 20 times 9.81, because by using the summation of forces in y direction first, you can find the FDE directly, quickly. FDE is three, 392 Newton, and then you go to summation of forces in x direction, which is FDE cosine of 30 minus FCD. So since we know FDE from the first equation, we're gonna plug it into here and solve for FCD. Okay, beautiful. Now we go to the second, so FBD means free body diagram at point D. Now we go to free body diagram at point C. Remember the tension for FCD, it was a tension, correct? 340 Newton. We have a tension in FAC, tension in FDC. Apply the equation of equilibrium, and you end up with this equation. Summation of forces in Y direction, you end up with this equation. You have um, 
and two unknowns here, FAC and FPC. There are two unknowns and two equations. You solve them simultaneously, you end up with this answer, FPC and FAC. Okay, so this is called um, uh, a uh, three bar, uh, trying to uh, apply the equation of equilibrium to solve the uh, problems that it's called uh, cables and pulleys and so on, or tension on the cable by uh, sketching the free body diagram correctly. Let me go, let me stop the share here. I've already posted that PowerPoint, okay? I've already posted. So I'm gonna go share a screen, which is this one here. I'm going to uh, uh, pick a, an example problem here. This is my favorite one here, okay? Because I wanted to show you how you can utilize the spring force, okay? Spring force. So here we have a spring with a known constant or uh, a stiffness of the spring along the cable AB, which is this spring of 300 Newton per meters. And it says determine the required length of cord AC because we don't know that length of this cord AC. So that the eight kilograms lamp can be suspended in the position shown. The undeformed length of a spring or original length, undeformed length means original length of the uh, spring AB is four tenths of a meter, okay? Four tenths of a meter. And the spring has a stiffness of K, K is denoted for the stiffness of the spring because in engineering language world, we call it a stiffness. How stiff the spring is because in an application, that you are going to utilize or use those springs. Because I remember back in the old time when I was working on a design problem and they asked me, you have to use the springs. But I didn't know where to go and get the springs. Then somebody gave me address in Elcom or somewhere, say you go to this place and then they sell you a spring. And then I asked the guy, can I have a spring? So what type of a stiffness? And I said, oops, I don't know. He said, go and calculate everything, then come back here. And I said, you are right. I made a mistake, I'm going to go back and I do the calculations, okay? All right, so, uh, so they're giving us the stiffness here, 300 Newton per meter, distance from hook B to C, horizontal distance, two meters. So we're going to draw the free body diagram of joint A or ring A, TAB. TAB means force of the spring, a spring force AB, because the force, a spring force is equal to K times the amount of a stretch. We know that unstretched length is a four tenths of a meter, okay? We wanted to know the amount of, uh, or, to, or the, the final length, or if we could find this stretch, amount of a stretch, then K, A, B times S gives us the force. If I, know the, if I know the force from this equilibrium, I can have the left-hand side T, A, B, which is F, A, B, force of uh, spring force, and I know the KAB, I can find the amount of a stretch. Okay, that's easy, that's equation. All right, so if the force in the spring AB is known, the stretch of the spring can be found using F equals KS, which I mentioned that. From the problem geometry, it is then possible to calculate the required length of AC because we wanted to know the length of this cable AC. All right, my friend, um, we already know that the weight equals mg, and apply the equation of equilibrium, summation of forces in x direction set to zero. It's all, this is, I like this method for better. You just indicate the equation of equilibrium and then you write the equation, okay? Don't attach it like previous example. Just write the equation of, uh, this, this is very important to indicate sum of all forces along the x axis is set to zero and this direction is positive. So you say TAB, okay, which is TAB minus TAC cosine of 30 degree set to zero. So measure of forces in y direction, TAC sine of 30 degree minus 78.5, so TAC is 157 Newton. TAB, we plug it into here, TAB is 135.9. So we know the tension now on the cable. What is this one? That's a force, that's a spring force, TAB. So if I plug it into here and K is known, we can find the amount of a stretch, okay? Under 35.9, and 300 Newton per meter, we solve for a stretch along the, uh, for the cable AB, which is 0.453. Since we know that the, uh, the amount of a stretch 
is the final length. If I take the L prime AB, which I call it the original length, to the left side becomes minus. Switch the side, switch the sign. LAB minus L prime AB is, is equivalent to SAB. But in this case, we know SAB, we know the original or undeformed length, undeformed length before we apply the load. We add them up. We add up these two uh, measurements or values and we get the total length of AB, which is 0.853. So the or horizontal distance from C to B, from C to B, the horizontal distance. So I need to know this from A to this point here. I need to know that because that will be the, uh, the cosine, okay, so to will be the LAC, will be the L length of AC times cosine of this angle, that will be the horizontal distance. Plus, LAB, what is LAB? The L length of from A to B, we determine that total length after we have this stretch and all that, we apply the load, the final length is 0.8, five, three plus LAC cosine of 30 degrees. And then since the, the total distance, the total distance is two meters, I know what this LAC is, which they ask us to determine. So there we go in here. And uh, we got the uh, length for the cable AC, it's about 1.32 meters, okay? So I think I'm done with this lecture today. This is really a, a, a a nice uh, review of physics maybe, physics 195, and the basic language of equation of equilibrium and the forces and tension in the cable, and trying to solve for the unknown and learning how to solve systems of equation. So I'm going to stop uh, the recording.